有两个厕所。有俩什么？厕所。好。厕所我就擦了。厕所坐，新坐啊。所以。啊，咱都有同学，是你们俩都同学，都同学，谁是你看，都是我这性格的。对。外向。外向。疯疯的。我丢了我的脸。你们听到我说的吗？有点儿。笑死了！因为你说当家。All right, so what we have looked at so far is a man and object. That is the form. Such that any vector here, x. There is a new vector for it here, small x. Small x is a function of capital X. The gradient of this function is a matrix. This matrix tells me how three vectors here have the form here. This is what F does, A, B, C. This gives me F A, F B, F C. The strain from this deformation to this deformation can be measured using epsilon small. And the rotation can be measured using the infinitesimal rotation matrix. Or you can measure the deformation using the decomposition that f is equal to ru and have your strain as a measure of u. And this is your rotation. Now in the next, uh, so right now we never talked anything, there was no time. So far there's nothing in time. I just have that an, a, an undeformed configuration and a deformed configuration that might be uh, um, deformed. That, that, that the x could be a, the distortions could be really large, so that the deformed shape does not look like the, the original shape. The deformations are really large, and this uh, there's no mention of time. Now. The, the measures of time appear, or the, 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 once the object is actually moving in space, I can have what we call instantaneous measures of deformation. And when we talk about instantaneous measures of deformation, these instantaneous measures of deformation have to be a function of the velocity of the object, or how the object is moving. So first I have to define the velocity of the object. x1 by partial t, partial x2 by partial t, partial x3 by partial t. Partial x3 
function x1 by function t function x2 by function t, we always assume that this x is constant in time, the reference configuration is constant, it does not change with time, we have one reference configuration, and the velocity is uh, the partial derivative of x with respect to t. One measure of uh, instantaneous measure of deformation is the gradient of v, which is equal to partial v1 by partial capital X1, partial v1 by partial capital X2, and so on, which is equal to partial 2x by partial x1 partial t so partial partial vi by partial capital xk partial capital xk by partial xk this is equal to f dot f <coughs> negative 1 so l Similar to the gradient of the displacement, remember the gradient of the displacement, we took the symmetric part and the skew symmetric part. Here, we also will take the skew symmetric part, the symmetric part of L, this vector and gives me a vector dx.
of the uh, so f dot takes dx and gives me how this is starting to move in space. Now L, this velocity gradient gives me the volume. If this is small dx, L is equal to F naught, F negative 1. F negative 1 takes the x and gives me f negative 1 small dx and then f dot takes it back and tells me how much dx is just about to move in or how much it's about to move in space so L is an instantaneous measure of deformation or of velocity of an object now let's see what happens if so this is the x Similar to what we did, sorry, small things. Similar to what we did in the deformation, okay, in the displacement gradient, we can do it in the velocity gradient, L, to find a symmetric part and a skew symmetric part, where W is equal to half L plus L transpose, uh, sorry, half L minus L transpose, and D is equal to half L plus L transpose. Now let's see what happens if I have an object that is rotating in space. <coughs> I have an object rotating such that Q is a function of time. For example, Q is equal to cosine theta t, sine theta t, so the angle is changing according to the time. Let's see what this velocity gradient will tell me. x is equal to q multiplied by x. p is equal to x dot. stretch and W will give me the spin. This is half Q dot Q transpose plus Q dot Q transpose transpose which is equal to half Q dot Q transpose plus Q Q dot transpose while W is equal to half minus q q dot transpose if 
but sets at any instant in time. Q, Q transpose is equal to I. Therefore, Q dot, Q transpose is equal to Q dot. Uh, sorry, plus Q. Q transpose dot is equal to the zero matrix. rotating in space with a measured body rotation the instantaneous measures of rotation Z and W will really predict whether this is rotating and spinning or it's just simply uh, it, whether it's uh, stretching as it's moving or not so the instantaneous measure predicts that the rotation is zero uh, sorry the stretch zero and the rotation uh, for the spin is described by L. There are a few uh, measures that we are going to need for the next chapter and the first uh, so there are a few quantities that we're going to require in the next and the first is if f is a function of time, if the information gradient is a function of time, how does the determinant change in time? If f For j dot, for dj by dt, and you have two proofs in your book: one using components and one a simpler uh, proof. So I'm going to use the simpler proof without the components. G. 
by t will be equal to f dot a dot f b cross f c divided by a dot b plus c plus f a dot f dot I'm going to divide here by FK dot FB cross FC and multiply here by FK dot FB cross FC so divided by A dot B cross C. Alright. This is the determinant of that. Now, what is this? First invariant. What's that? First, First invariant. Of which? Of f dot f negative 1. So this is the trace of f dot f negative 1. Which means that Tj. dj by dt is equal to the trace of L multiplied by j, which is the determinant of F. And we are going to use this identity in the next lecture. So, object and you see this equation a lot in fluid mechanics when you're looking at any fluid mechanics where you have a fluid that's incompressible 
you always see this equation that says partial v1 by partial x1 plus partial v2 by partial x2 plus partial v3 by partial x3 of the fluid is equal to zero. This, uh, the trace of the velocity gradient, which is equal to this quantity, tells me basically the amount of material that's instantaneously entering into this volume or the exiting this volume minus the quantity that's entering the volume. The quantity that exiting minus the quantity that's entering is equal to partial V1 by partial X1 plus partial V2 by partial X2 plus partial V3 by partial X3. If the material is incompressible, then this quantity is equal to zero. getting smaller and you have fluid entering and the fluid is exiting. V exit is constant and V entry is constant and the fluid is incompressible. Now the first question. So this fluid is incompressible. Faster or slower? Faster. Now, is the velocity here, the velocity here is constant. Is there an acceleration or not? There's no acceleration? So I'm asking about this point. So let's say you're riding a particle. You're in a ship inside that tube. Would you feel that you're going faster or slower or constant velocity? You're going fast. So what? But the velocity is constant. So what is what is the difference? When you look at the velocity as a function of the position and time, the velocity is constant. True. The velocity as a function of the position is constant. But the acceleration is not partial v x t with respect to t. That's not the acceleration. The acceleration of a particle is equal to partial the velocity with respect to t plus partial v with respect to x, partial x with respect to t. Because the axis, if I'm on a, because I'm, I'm tracing the acceleration of a particle, the acceleration of a particle is due to how much the velocity is actually changing at this point, and also if that particle is moving, how much the velocity is changing as you move multiplied by the velocity of the particle. And so, for
for this particular example, it's true that this is equal to zero. But it doesn't mean that there's no acceleration. There is acceleration due to that the particle that I'm tracking is moving, and as it moves, it actually requires acquires a different velocity, and, and so there is an actual acceleration. And so the acceleration for this particular example would be equal to parcha v by parcha x multiplied <laughs> by v. And that's why we call it the material time derivative. We're taking the derivative with respect to time by following an arc. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, by following a particle, I'm tracing the time derivative of uh, a certain uh, parameter, but I'm attaching this parameter to the, the particle. I'm only interested in how this parameter changes in the particle. And so this, the, the material time derivative of the velocity is not constant in this example, which is the acceleration. This is called the material. I have phi, the distribution of phi, uh, or let's say temperature. So the temperature is given on the object as it deforms in space. And I'll tell you, uh, it give me the, the position in space, in space and the time, and I will tell you what the temperature of that point is. But I would like to know the temperature of this point in the future. Is it changing or not? So, the material, so here phi is given as a function of the spatial position and time, the material that time derivative of phi is equal to how d changes, how phi changes with respect to t, following the particle, because I'm following the particle, this is equal to partial phi by partial t plus partial phi by partial x dot partial x by partial t. Which is equal to how this function <coughs> changes with respect to time plus the gradient of phi dot the velocity. And this term follows the part. Now I could have a function that takes this phi and gives me back another phi as a function of capital X and T. So tell me the time and I'll tell you what the temperature in the future will be given a, a given material point. Now the material time derivative of capital phi now capital phi is the, it's the same temperature, but just a different coordinate. I'm either using the coordinates in space or the coordinates in the reference configuration. Now the material time derivative of phi, now capital phi 
is a function of capital X and T is equal to partial by by partial T plus partial phi by partial capital X partial capital X by partial T but I assume that the the, 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 the uh, reference configuration is not moving <coughs> and so if phi is given in terms of the original coordinates and time and the material time derivatives of phi will be partial phi by partial t if phi is given as a function of the spatial coordinates and time then the material time derivative is equal to partial phi by partial t plus a term due to the movement of the object if the object is constant, is not moving in space, then true partial phi by partial t gives me the rate of change. But if the particles that I'm following are have a, a velocity that's not that zero, then how this quantity changes also depends on the velocity of that particle. So we have two problems, and that's it for today. Problem one, just another example. I have a, with this, the tube has a very cross sectional area A. That's equal to 1 plus x. Here, x is equal to 0. X equal to L. The horizontal velocity of the fluid V is equal to one meter per second. The fluid is incompressible. Fluid is incompressible means that A multiplied by B is constant. Is equal to A multiplied by B at the entry. At the entry, d multiplied by b is equal to 1. At any point inside, 1 plus x multiplied by v is equal to 1, which means the velocity is decreasing. As you move, the particle slows down. Because the particle slows down, there is an acceleration. How much is that acceleration? <coughs> distribution of the horizontal acceleration is equal to zero. If you look at the acceleration as a function of x and t, or if you look at the velocity as a function of x and t, indeed, partial v by partial t is equal to zero. So the, acce the acceleration, if you're just tracing space, if you're looking at the space, and you're measuring the velocity at this point, in space, the acceleration, you're, you're always going to measure the same velocity. But that's not what the acceleration is. The acceleration is the acceleration of the particle itself. The acceleration of the particle is equal to partial b by partial t plus partial b by partial x multiplied by partial x by partial t. So the acceleration is equal to partial b by partial x Partial x by partial t is b. So this is 
this is 1 over 1 plus x. <coughs> so the acceleration of the particle is equal to negative 1, 1 plus x. So there is an acceleration. example where a plate is rotating and as it rotates it has a certain speed so q is equal to q of x where q is a rotation matrix uh, cosine omega t sine omega t negative sine Right, negative sine omega t. So Q, the rotation matrix that describes <coughs> this motion is equal to sine omega t, negative sine omega t, sine omega t, cosine omega t. It's acquiring the temperature of the medium, and the temperature of the medium is given by this equation. So this, this temperature is not a function of time, which means if I put my finger at any point and I measure the temperature, the temperature does not change. If I put my finger here and touch it, the temperature does not change with time. However, because as the object is moving, it's acquiring the temperature of the medium, there is uh, the temperature of every point is changing. So there is a material time derivative of the temperature. Because this point, which is here, in a, in a moment, it's going to be somewhere else, and it's going to take a different temperature at that other point. that temperature depends on the medium, so partial, where d t temperature by dt is equal to how the temperature changes with respect to time. It actually does not change with respect to time. It's given as a function of only the spatial coordinates plus the gradient of the temperature multiplied by the velocity. So this is zero plus the gradient of the t, which is given by those vectors, dot product the v. So as this point moves in this direction, and the gradient of the temperature is in this direction, the dot product between this and this gives me the rate of change of temperature in this particular So next uh, week is your final combined lecture, and then we're going to talk about your uh, the time of your midterm, which uh, we already uh, discussed, but we'll uh, just confirm. And then uh, we also, for your final exam, the final exam is not posted on uh, on bare tracks, but the final exam. Uh, will be, I think, that's just, I'll tell you when exactly it will be. It will be in this room.
will be on December 12th in this room as well from 9 to 12. I, I think for uh, this, the for the geotechnical group, your final exam will be two hours. But you, the, for the geotechnical group, it will be two hours. Alright, any questions?